Uh, Corey, uh, in a campaign mailer, you said you were, quote, vigorously opposed to the extension of term limits, end of quote, as I was. Uh, I searched the public records and I can't find any record of you opposing the extension of term limits. Uh, what I did find is that you had endorsed uh, Michael Bloomberg for a third term, as, as I saw, uh, with an organization called Gays for Bloomberg. So just to be very clear, did you support Michael Bloomberg for a third term and take part in the group called Gays for Bloomberg? Uh, one, I did oppose the extension of term limits. Uh, I was, uh, I, I, exposed to, I opposed the extension of term limits. How? I was against the extension of term limits. I, I spoke about it. I was at events uh, where people opposed the extension of term limits. I oppose it. You, just because you can't find it in a newspaper doesn't mean it didn't exist. I did oppose the extension of term limits. Uh, two, uh, there was an organization of different LGBT people who uh, had supported the mayor for a third term. Uh, I, they listed me in it, but I wasn't active in any way. I can tell you, that's the truth. You can tell them why. It's the truth. I, I did support uh, the mayor for a third term, and I supported the mayor for a third term uh, because I because I was deeply involved with uh, marriage equality. And at the time, the mayor had made promises on working on uh, state senators, uh, Marty Golden in Brooklyn, uh, and Frank Padovan in Queens, and saying that he was gonna help get them vote for, to vote for marriage equality uh, in the state Senate. I had supported him because I was working on marriage equality since 2002, and I thought that he could be a real advocate for that. I have stood up to the mayor in many regards. I stood up with him against uh, living wage. I stood up with him when he was opposed to paid sick leave. I stood up with him at Chelsea Market, the Rudin Plan, the NYU land grab. I have stood up time and time again. I disagree with the mayor on more than I agree with him on, but I will say he has a, done a great job on gun control, on getting illegal guns off the streets and advocating for that. And I am happy of his activism on supporting uh, pro-choice organizations that have, uh, that have fought for more reproductive rights. So I don't agree with the mayor on most things. Uh, stood up against him on stop and frisk, but I uh, agree with him on a few things. He's been good on gay rights. He's been good on reproductive choice. He's been good in getting guns off the streets. Yeah, you know, there's going to be a tremendous amount of development that's going to occur on the west side from Hudson Yards to uh, the Javits Center to hopefully, my opinion, is moving Madison Square Garden off of Penn Station. I wanted to hear your thoughts on the future of the Farley Post Office building and what you thought about the general project plan for Moynihan Station on that site how you think the project plan is working out right now at Moynihan, and what you think of the second phase of the project plan uh, for Moynihan and how that impacts the community. Sure. Um, first of all, I think that the Moynihan plan, like too much of the development that's happening in this district, makes promises to do things like improve the transportation uh, and uh, the rails, but then it doesn't actually achieve that. I think it's another example of how concessions are made, but then not delivered in development. And as I said before, there is going to be massive development in this district. There's going to be 20,000 units under the May Mayor Bloomberg's plan, which is the plan that you have uh, put forward and have taken That's credit not. for championing in terms That's of creating not. affordable housing. The new market plan of Michael Bloomberg puts forward 20,000 units in this district, of which only 5,000 of them are slotted to even be affordable housing. The, there are many problems that, the, one of the first problems is that it uses the HUD median for the average uh, median income, which is far above, higher than what the local median is for income. So what that does is then, even the 5,000 units that are supposed to be affordable, for the overwhelming majority aren't even affordable for you, for us. Uh, we can't afford the affordable development that's being planned to come into our district. And out of that 5,000, uh, only 16% has been uh, created. Out of that 16%, two-thirds of that is not affordable. So I would say that the plans in place are, are not effective, don't create affordable housing, and don't actually uh, recognize the concessions. Let her finish, let her finish. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. 
what's the post office. That's, that's basically what I would say. Okay. Uh, we'll have one more question from Lincoln, then we're going to go to close.